Well, hey there, YouTube. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for stopping by and hanging out with me on your Sunday morning. So today on What's on the Wall, we have the Grand Hauler from Tamiya. Now, this is probably the biggest truck I have in my collection. Um, certainly, probably the heaviest as well. So real quick, before we dive into the actual truck, um, I've got some information on you know when this was released and all that stuff. I'll go over that really quick. So the Grand Hauler was released from Tamiya in February of 2015 and it came out on part number 56344. Now, shortly after, about a year later, in January of 2016, they did a very limited run of factory assembled kits, and those came out on part number 23800. Now, that was like a fully ready to run truck, I believe. Um, I know it was a very short limited run and not too many of them made, so those people that did get them probably got them as a collector's item. Um, there's also a matte black version of this um, that came out in March or May of 2018, May of 2018. So this is a 1 14th scale truck. So it's not a 10th scale, even though it's huge. If, it's, if it was 10th scale, this thing would take up the entirety of my bench. So it is a 14th scale truck. So it's about 27 and a quarter inches long. It's seven and a half inches wide, and it's about 11 and three quarter inches tall to the top of the stacks. Now, mine are a little bit shorter because I don't have the bent back tips on mine. I just left them to square stacks. I kind of like that look better. So that's kind of the, the brief history of the Tamiya side of it. Um, now, to get into the truck itself, this was the first gift I received from the RC Elf, and I still cannot thank him enough for you know, sending me this kit and everything else that came along with it. Um, you know, I have wanted one of these for a very, very, very long time. The cost of everything getting one of these is, you know, kind of intimidating. The trucks aren't cheap. The MFC is not cheap. Then you have trailers and radios. And I, there's just an awful lot that can go into the, one of these. And once you kind of run the numbers and put it all in your cart, you're kind of like, ugh. That's a lot, <laughs> and you usually remove, 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 remove. You know, I've done it a dozen times at least um, in the last probably six or eight years. You know, I see them go on sale and be like, oh, that's a pretty good price. So then it just kind of tabulates up and it gets very expensive. Um, the trucks run around $500 a piece. Um, it does have the MFC unit or MFU unit, whatever you want to call it, um, which is basically the light and sound and um, ESC kit for these trucks. Now this one, the part number on this is 56511, and that's the U.S. type truck noise. So it has the big rumbly, you know, Detroit diesel sound or Caterpillar diesel sound and has all the, you know, backup beepers and horns and everything they sell a european one which has more in tune with them and it actually has a few more sounds on it which actually are kind of cool um but it definitely is in tune with tamiya's euro truck style um there's a variety of trailers for them um i'll show you that in just a minute there's just not enough room on the bench so i did the truck in the basic box art theme we have all the correct decals on it. The only decal I did not put on it are kind of the scrolly script decals that are intended for the back. And on the back, I didn't really, I didn't mind the decal. The problem with those decals is there's so much clear space on them that when you put it on there, it just stands out as it's a decal. And to cut out all that little stuff, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't thrilled about that idea any, anyway so I just custom cut you know the Adams playground wording and stuck it on the back you know you see a lot of these customized trucks and you know they got like you know hauling ass or you know money to go or money to burn and all these kind of cool little logos you see on the back of them that people customize their trucks with so I just went with the Adams playground on that um basically the truck is stock you know I really didn't upgrade much on it uh, there are a few things outside of stock. I did put a higher turn motor in it. I believe I'm running a 55 turn crawler motor in this. So you can actually go up higher. You can go up to about an 80 turn and still have a, a good bit of speed. The truck does have a three speed transmission in it. So you have a low range, a medium range, and then a high range. So low range is, you know, carefully backing it into a trailer and carefully maneuvering it around. Medium range is more of like you're towing a load around and, you know, you got a little bit of speed. And then high range is just, it's, it's kind of silly. <laughs> um, I mean, it's, it's fun if you do want to have a nice, you know, flat spot to run it on and, you know, whip it around and see it go and all that stuff. But I've only put it in high range for just, you know, out, like I said, out in the parking lot goofing around. Pretty much it lives in first gear. Um, 
The other things I've added to it, I did put in the remote disconnect so I can actually disconnect the trailer from uh, the truck and do all that stuff through the radio. So I'll go over the trailer here in a moment. But like I said, I basically have it done in the box art theme. This is the Tamiya uh, Metal Fake Blue color. Um, I'll put that down here somewhere. I don't remember the, the TS code for it. Um, there is a lot of paint on here um, and a lot of painting. So if you're looking to get into one of these kits, this is definitely something. You, this is a, a winter project. They plan it out, build it over a few weeks or a month or maybe even a couple months type of thing. You know, you can you can sit down and build this in a couple days. I don't recommend it. You know, you're you're putting an awful lot of time and effort into this. You might as well do everything the best you can and put a good amount of time into the paint, into the details, into everything. Wiring up this guy is a kind of a nightmare. If you don't like wiring, this probably isn't the truck for you. There is a lot of wiring that goes in here. This whole back cab is just a spaghetti rat's nest of, of wiring. Um, but we do have the remote disconnect here. Um, I added in these diamond plate covers for the chassis rails um you know i just didn't want to see down through there and you know on a on a nice tricked out high-end truck like this um you would see something like that on there anyway so i did put that on there and there's also a switch here which basically that allows me to disconnect the rumble motor in here so when i'm showing people or you know running it for a video or whatever i'll leave the rumble motor on and you know it shakes the truck and all that stuff when i'm just goofing off around here and wanting to you know just go downstairs and back it into the trailer pick the trailer up and you know take off and all this stuff you know i don't want that motor running and just shaking the truck to death you know there's loctite on everything but you know that rumble motor does kind of just you know wiggle things loose after time so i put a little disconnect switch up here and that way i can you know just turn that off run the truck i have all the lights i have all the sound and i can turn the motor on later if i want to so for controlling the truck you do need a decent radio now this isn't an expensive radio by any means i think i paid 70 bucks for this thing now i did have to put in the stick um, centering mod to this and you can find that over on Bob's um, uh, Hobby Concepts LLC channel um, he sells you know all kinds of stuff for this thing so if you're into these trucks or thinking about getting one of these trucks go over to Bob's channel and watch his videos you know one it'll convince you to go ahead and get one and two it shows you everything you need to know it shows you how to program the remote how to install the mods um, you know how to wire the truck how to do everything in here he has troubleshooting and all kinds of videos he is an expert at building and maintaining and modifying these trucks it's amazing uh, so I did buy the little upgrade kit from him uh, so the throttle stick centers itself um, but it's, it's like a 70 dollar radio works great um, and the cool thing with this is and we'll get to that here in a second with the trailer is you can actually buy in two receivers to it um, but you know I have all the controls for the lights the remote switch the trailer disconnect the, the trailer legs all that stuff I can control right from here I don't have to touch the trailer at all I can back in pick it up drive away drop it drive away it's really cool so real quick before we get the trailer up here and talk about that a little bit i do want to start it up uh so i gotta turn the radio on now hopefully you guys can hear it i got the sound turned down a little bit um but it beeps to start up it does the whole engine start up and i don't know if you guys can see the stacks rumbling around but the stacks are rumbling around so I don't know if you guys can see the stacks rumbling around, but, you know, they are, you know, rumbling around because the whole truck is vibrating and everything. It's really neat. Um, with the radio, I can turn on the lights remotely. So you have just the cab lights and then the headlights. And, you know, it has the tail lights and everything else, and you can turn them off uh, from the remote. Turn on the hazards. And then you have your horn. Now, let me turn this thing down a little bit more so. So I'm not screaming over top of it. So you do have um, the motor noise when you're running it, but also when you back up. The reverse lights come on, the beeper comes on. And your brake lights come on when you apply the brakes. So, 
<clears throat> All right, let me shut this thing down. And that's another good thing is I can turn that rumble motor off so you don't hear that vibrating when the sound's down low. Because when I'm running it downstairs, I don't have the sound cranked up. Um, so it kind of makes the whole thing kind of vibrate around. Uh, turn the radio off. So as far as running them, you kind of need something fairly level and flat. You know, a paved, paved parking lot, concrete, something like that, your garage floor, your house, whatever. Yeah, not really, this one's, especially this one is not suited for running, you know, rough ground. Um, something like that, you would want the King Hauler or something like that that has a little bit more ground clearance because there's not much clearance under these fenders. You know, uh, three quarters of an inch, half inch at most. And underneath the front bumper, you may have a half inch of ground clearance. So this is not, you know, an off-road logging truck. <laughs> something like that, you would want to get something like the King Hauler or at least a different front bumper and probably remove the fenders off of this. Um, so real quick, let me move this guy out of the way. Ugh. So I forgot to say, you know, this runs on full leaf springs, you know, all that stuff. But after I got the truck, after I got the truck built, the elf reached out and said, hey, you need a trailer for that guy and sent me the trailer. So, you know, with that, I had to make sure I did it as cool as I could. Now, a lot of guys, some of the guys gave me grief with the little rack up here. You know, I just thought it was a great way to add in a little bit of touches most American trucks don't run this crash rack up front, but I added the stripes on the inside and the outside of this crash rack, so the same stripes are on the front and back, and then I did put the little, you know, scripty bit there. Um, I don't have the batteries in this right now, so I'm not going to turn it on, but when I'm running the truck, like I said, this is completely wireless. Underneath has its own, I'm not going to tip it up because I don't want to disturb the load, but underneath it has its own receiver, its own battery pack, and everything to run the light system on. So when the truck is running, the tail lights are on, you know, when the reverse kicks in, the reverse lights come on. Um, when the turn signals turn, when the wheels turn, the turn signals turn on, you know, it's all remote. And I also went in and added LEDs in between each one of the little tiny stubby um, side rails. I didn't want to run the full size side rails, but I did want to have something to make it easy down to bind down loads with and you know it was just a quick and easy way of doing it um so i have let's see one two three four five amber leds running down the sides and then of course we have the full tail lights and everything lit up as well now this does have the same leaf spring suspension in the back and kind of that walking rear end so it does allow for you know, suspension travel back here. So when you're driving it, you know, you can actually see the wheels, you know, walking over things. Um, and on this, I do have the um, electronic legs on it. So like I said, when I'm on the remote, I can back into the trailer. It'll connect the, to the kingpin here. And then I can actually just slowly raise these legs up and then drive away. And then same thing. When I come back, I drop the legs. I can disconnect the trailer and it releases the pin and I can just drive straight out. Really, really cool setup. It took a little bit of time to figure all that out. Um, but, you know, I think it, it, it pairs perfectly with the truck. It's got the same, you know, stripes underneath as the truck has. So the whole thing is keyed together perfectly for the truck. Uh, for load, you know, I kind of run different things on here. Um, right now I just have some really thin PVC pipe that are bound together into two big bundles and then a block of, or a, pallet full of cinder block that's been 3D printed. So I found that file. Um, I want to say I got the file from Western Sharpies, I believe. I'll leave a link down to his channel. He has a whole ton of 3D printed stuff for tractor trailers. Um, loads, um, you know, equipment, bits and pieces, and accessories for the trucks. You know, if you want to run airlines and stuff from your trailer to your truck he, he's got a ton of stuff over there but i know he had a few different things he's got a little strap uh 3d printed strap things that i actually printed i haven't made the straps yet but i think the cinder blocks came from him so i just printed out a bunch of them and put them on the thing um now there is a little cube of cardboard in here making up the center of this and even with that there's i think 58 cinder blocks that make up the perimeter and the top layer of this 
So if you plan on printing them, you know, you're going to print a lot. So it was 116 to make two pallets. I still have to print off more to finish the second pallet because I'm a few short on the top. I think I'm like six short, which kind of sucked. <laughs> um, but, you know, I actually use the supply chains and the little binders down. So you can kind of pull some tension on there and hook it on there. And, you know, it actually, you know, it doesn't secure it, secure it. So, you know, if I flipped it over, it'd probably fall out. But, you know, for scale running, you know, it's not going anywhere um cool rubber mud flaps i still need to get some i want to do some like ap logos for the back of that but we'll get to that um you know i probably still will add some hop-ups to this i'm kind of looking at some of the aluminum wheels but you know with what two four six eight eight sets of rears and a pair of fronts it gets a little pricey but anyway, um, that's pretty much the, the grand hauler. I know this is a little bit longer. There was an awful lot to go over. It's a really big truck. It's a really big trailer and a whole lot of cool stuff. But like I said, you know, I really wanted to make this as nice as possible. Um, you know, I don't run it a whole lot, but, you know, I do get it downstairs at least probably every other month or so and just spend an hour or two just, you know, backing into the trailer, picking the trailer up, driving around, you know, put little obstacles on the floor so I can just, you know, stay decent at driving it. I'm not good at all. <laughs> you know, I, for the first five minutes, I'm, I'm wiggling and waggling trying to back the trailer up. But after five or ten minutes you kind of remember and you get that muscle memory back and be like oh yeah that's how you gotta you know do this do that you can start backing it up pretty well but they are super fun rainy day kits for sure you know if you have an unfinished basement or you know just a large open area in your house to play with one of these you know it's a great little rainy day project and you know the batteries with since it being a crawler motor and a decent i think i have a 3600 milliamp battery in here you know i've run it for close to an hour and you know it's still going so you know, it would definitely, you know, give you something to do on a rainy, snowy day. And of course, you know, it's a perfect winter project. Anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap it up here. Everybody out there, you guys be happy, be healthy, be safe, and I will catch you on the next one. See you.